This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. The controversy over Obamacare continues. While Congress was on its 4th of July break, Obama made a recess appointment and put Dr. Donald Berwick in charge of Medicare, Medicaid, and the Children's Health Insurance Program. In doing so, Obama circumvented the normal Senate confirmation process. Dr. Berwick, a Harvard University professor, has said some very controversial things, including indicating his support for health care rationing, redistribution of money from the wealthy folks to pay for health care for poor ones, and opposing free markets. Wyoming Republican U.S. Senator John Barrasso joins us by phone to discuss this. In case you don't know, Senator Barrasso is a doctor himself, an orthopedic surgeon. Welcome to Newsmax, Senator. Thank you very much for having me, Ashley. You say on your website the appointment is an insult to the American people and that Obama has made a mockery of his pledge to be accountable and transparent. It would appear that you're pretty angry about this. Do your Senate colleagues feel pretty much the same way? Well, I think they do, and you even have seen Democrats. Uh, Max Baucus, who is opposed to this as well, and he sees it as, a, as an insult uh, to the American people because it's time for Dr. Berwick to come and explain his views to the American people in a congressional hearing. But this recess appointment, there's not even any hearings. And uh, when, when Barack Obama was a senator and not a president, and uh, President Bush made a recess appointment, uh, then Senator Obama called that appointee damaged goods. He says he'll have less credibility. That was John Bolton, exactly correct? That was John That's exactly Bolton, who right? it was. Yeah. Exactly who it was. Yes. And I will tell you, this, uh, this appointment of Dr. Berwick, first, the president should have made an appointment to be the head of Medicare and Medicaid over a year ago. It should have been one of his first appointments. Because we had spent a year discussing health care legislation. And when the president proposed cutting $500 billion from our seniors on Medicare, you know, there should be somebody in charge of Medicare we would then come to Congress and testify what the impact of that is going to be on the lives and the health of our seniors. And when the president proposes to cram 16 million more Americans onto Medicaid, a program where many of those people can't find a doctor now, well, there should have been somebody in charge of Medicaid to come to Congress and explain what the impacts of that kind of legislation would be. So I think it's been intentionally misleading on the part of the president to, number one, not appoint anybody through the whole debate and the whole discussion, and then only appoint somebody after the bill is signed into law, and then not even allow them to come to Congress and explain themselves. Well, now, Obama and the Democrats say the Republicans were stalling the nomination, and that's why he had to appoint him during a recess. What do you say to that? That's a big smoke screen, and uh, people on both sides of the aisle know that. The, uh, the Republicans have been calling for a hearing. I've been calling for a hearing. Senator Grassley, the ranking member of the Finance Committee, has been calling for a hearing. All of, uh, all of uh, Dr. Berwick's paperwork and questions, the written questions, haven't even gotten back to the Senate yet for the hearing to be held. So there's been a lot of stalling on the White House. This is intentionally misleading and, uh, and really, I think, an insult to the American people. What are Dr. Berwick's biggest liabilities, and is he a dangerous man? Uh, you just look at his quotes. I, I'm not going to make a judgment. I'll just say, let, let the listener decide. You know, this is somebody that said, I'm a romantic about the National Health Service. I love it. He said, the decision is not whether or not we will ration care. The decision is whether we will ration with our eyes open. So this is somebody who's been knighted in England because of his love by the National Health Service, he said, which is the British Health Service. He calls it a seductress. Uh, you know, you say, boy, is that what I want from my parents, for my grandparents, or for me, when you look at the survival rates for cancer in the United States, it's so much better than it is in Britain. And it's not because our doctors are all that much better. It's because patients get care sooner in the United States than they do in Britain. That's the difference, because when you delay care, essentially you deny care, and the American people do not want to live under a health care system that uh, the British people are subjected to right now. Your colleague, Kansas Senator Pat Roberts, says the recess appointment proves Obama did not have the support of a majority of Democrats and Republicans in the Senate for confirmation. Do you think the Obama administration is ruling against the will of the American people? Well, I think they have on a lot of things. They did on the health care bill. You had 60 percent of the American people saying, do not pass this bill, full with uh, all of these uh, you know, the Cornhusker kickback, the Louisiana purchase, the, you, you take a look at all of these things that were in there, it was unseemly and it was wrong, and the American people said, I don't want that, because most people think it's going to just raise the cost of their own care and make their own care, the quality of it, go down. So this isn't the first time that uh, this administration has said, the heck with you, the American people, we know better than you do. 
And speaking of healthcare rationing, let's say, for example, one of your senior patients needs hip replacement surgery or maybe knee surgery. Is it likely that it'll be either prohibited or you won't be paid under Obamacare? Well, that's what happens in Canada right now. They say, you know, we're going to pay for so many operations per year. They put a budgeted number. They do the same with cataract surgery, a number of different things. And once they do that many operations a year, we call it trick-or-treat medicine, because usually by the end of October, by Halloween, they have uh, maxed out the number that they're going to do for the year, and then they don't do any more. And that's why people end up waiting. And when the president talks about health care coverage, coverage is very different than actually getting care. You know, I've practiced in Wyoming for, for 25 years, and I've operated on people from Canada because they can't get care in Canada. They have coverage. They have this their health care system up there. But if you can't get the care that you want or need, you really, the coverage isn't worth anything. And that's where I think they're heading in the United States with putting uh, Dr. Berwick in charge of the $800 billion budget for Medicare and Medicaid. Some predict the health overhaul law will eventually drive some doctors out of their practices and discourage college grads from going to medical school, resulting in a doctor shortage. Do you see that happening? Well, there's a doctor shortage already. And the health care law doesn't really put money into the uh, effort to train more family physicians to do the sorts of things to deal with the shortages that were coming. But, but I think one of the additional concerns is that doctors, if they're able to retire, will. Some may not choose medicine as a career. Uh, there are, as I talk to doctors, and I'm going to spend uh, the better part of today at the hospital where I practiced for years seeing a number of my colleagues, that's the kind of discussions that I expect to have today, and I expect to hear the exact same things that you're talking about. You mentioned a poll before. A Rasmussen poll now shows six out of ten Americans support full repeal of Obamacare. Would you, as both a senator and a doctor, like to see that happen? I would like to see us to repeal this and replace it with something that we know will work to help people. Let people buy insurance across state lines. Give individual incentives for people who stay healthy and and. and, and take preventive measures. Let small businesses join together. Deal with lawsuit abuse, which we know drives up the cost of care with all the unnecessary tests that are often ordered as part of defensive medicine. And then I think for people that buy their own health insurance uh, personally, they ought to get the same tax breaks that the big companies get when they uh, pay for the insurance. So there are a number of things we could do to improve the system starting today that are not being done. Senator, you also serve on the Environment and Public Works Committee. We know you, like Oklahoma's Jim Inhofe, are very much opposed to cap-and-trade. Now, Senator Inhofe has told us several times the issue is dead, yet Obama and Senators Kerry and Lieberman are still out there pushing it. What do you predict to be the end result of all of this? Well, I sure hope Senator Inhofe's right about this being dead, and I'm going to work to that, to that end. Um, my concern is a, in a lame-duck session, if uh, you know, after the elections, that, uh, that this president uh, and Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi try to push through some very unpopular positions. Uh, to Some people call it cap-and-trade. I call it cap-and-tax because it's a major energy tax on the families of this country. The, uh, and I think it doesn't do anything at all uh, in terms of the whole global uh, situation because China is still the number one emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. Uh, and almost half of the greenhouse gases of the world are coming from China. So I think at a time of 10% unemployment, it is a terrible mistake to additionally handicap our own economy uh, by putting additional burdens on the small businesses and the large businesses of the country. And finally, if EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson tries to impose greenhouse gas emission caps by directive, is there anything the Senate can do to stop her? Well, we've been trying, and you know, you just said it earlier about the... Uh, is this administration doing anything regardless of what the public wants? This, again, is something that flies in the face of, uh, of rational thought and the, uh, and, and the true will of the American people. The people don't want this imposed upon them, uh, and it really is, uh, is not in the best interest of the country and I think will be harmful to the economy. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso, thanks so much. Thanks, Ashley. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.